Hello and welcome to this video about upgrades to my 3D printer VisiBot, which I made from the Trunk CX-5SA. I have not tested them fully yet, been only a couple of days since I started printing, but I will give you an insight why I bought them and why you may consider getting one for yourself. Some of those will be generic upgrades and some specific to VisiBot. So let's get started, going from the least useful to the most useful, at least in my opinion and for my use. Number 6. Water-cooled generic system which I bought from Mellow for 73 euros. This included a water pump, reservoir, heat exchanger and tubing to circulate water throughout the system. With water cooling I don't need to care about how hot it is inside enclosure as heat will be dumped outside. The sole reason why I think this is the least useful is because I don't really print with engineering filaments that require very high temps. At the same time it adds a lot of potential failure points that could end up badly. There's nearly no difference in noise, but it was really painful to mount so the pump doesn't vibrate. So I ended up with some redneck engineering. Not to mention stretching the tube was really hard to do. There's one benefit that is specific to VisiBot and that is the ability to use shorter version of Goliath Hotend that does not require any PTFE tube and ultimately making the whole assembly more rigid. Number 5. Aluminum lightweight gantry bar and aluminum brackets. This should provide improved stability and potentially enhancing print quality and overall printer performance. Right now my printer wants to get out of the apartment as soon as I print full speed. Unfortunately I do not think it was a bottleneck in my system considering the price and the fact it didn't really help mitigate vibrations alongside Y axis. It costs around 40 euro for the bar and 35 euro for the brackets. Another reason why I bought them was the issue I was having with the axis twist. Unfortunately the 3D printed pieces I had worn out. Probably due to heat, I can't be bothered to reprint them again, only to face the same issue after some time. Nevertheless, Axis Twist is still present with a new setup. However, there is a second solution to this problem. Clipper has Axis Twist compensation and has been working remarkably well. That being said, if you have Corexi printer and for some unknown reason one side of the bed doesn't have the same layer squish even with a proper height map, it is due to access to it and you may consider calibrating it. It's definitely not a budget friendly solution especially since software workaround works pretty well. Number 4. Since I upgraded an extruder and hotend I also needed to print or purchase a compatible printhead bracket. Current one that is designed for BQH2V2 would obviously not fit. Yes I could also print it but it would have been a real challenge to securely mount and align the extruder assembly. This could potentially lead to print quality and reliability issues down the road. By investing in a new printhead bracket, I would be sure to avoid future headaches. This one costs about 83 euro and I definitely do not regret it. Right now my whole assembly is wobbly, so I hope aluminum will not have similar problems, especially after some time. Not to mention it does fit Goliath out of the box without PTFE tube. It needs a little adapter plate, but I already included the cost with an extruder. Number 3. A canvas board. Big 3 Tech EBB36. I was not sure if it would be a worthwhile upgrade, but after messing around printhead, I was sold. Cable management is so much easier and cleaner. Just 4 wires back to the main board, plus the ability to use onboard accelerometer for 17 euro is money well spent. I can connect more stuff to the printhead like filament sensor, scanner probe, etc. without messing around with a whole wire harness. Biggest downside is that setting it up was giga pain. So much so I had to use three different guides to set it up correctly. I will link them in the description below. I also bought U2C board, but it turned out it wasn't needed in my case since Clipper has the ability to convert boards like Octopus Pro to work as a can bridge. For some reason Big Tree Tech decided to use an old RJ11 telephone connector for this, but thankfully I managed to find some old cable and connect it. Number 2. Machine Water Cooled VZ Hextrudor. I have nothing against my current BQH2V2 except it doesn't really fit well 
for Corexi printers. It forces me to use some weird solutions such as front mounted probes. I also lose about 30 to 40 millimeters on the X axis since it's pretty wide. I wanted to try water cooling to manage printer heat. After researching various options, I chose an extruder that has a heat sink integrated into its design. Water cooling, while not as common as air cooling, can provide more efficient heat transfer and temperature control. By choosing an extruder with a built-in heatsink, I was able to get relatively short and compact printhead. Extruder itself was 75 euro, but I also had to buy a heat brake for 21 euro and adapter plate for 16 euro. So the total cost was about 112 euro. Not too bad, but I feel like adapter plate for 16 euro is way too much. If you do not have an extruder yet or just started Tronxy conversion, I definitely recommend getting this one. Air cooled ones should be just as good, but not as short and you will need a PTFE tube to connect them. There are two main reasons why it is so high on the list. First one is that it's a version with the fixed issues of Bond Tech gears, which Vez is talking about in this video. Second is because of how open it is, there are really no issues with loading, unloading or even unjamming filament. One of the least painful extruder I have seen. Also very well engineered. Number one, since I upgraded to an aluminum extruder this also meant I needed a new hotend. I decided to go all in, so I chose Goliath. It was originally named Long Shlong Dong or LSD in short, but because of branding issues had to be changed. It will forever remain LSD in our hearts. I have chosen it not necessarily because it offers some extreme performance, but because it has a relatively good price to performance ratio. And it fits like a glove, so I wouldn't have to fiddle around too much with the mounting. Goliath costs around 117 euro, comes with a built-in 100 watt heater, heat brake, silicone sock, PT1000 thermistor and a bunch of mounting accessories. There are several reasons why it is first on the list, but all of them can be summarized as a damn well-engineered hotend. It is extremely sturdy, as I was able to completely destroy a nozzle by smashing it into bed while testing the accelerometer probe. Nozzle no longer had any opening, while the Goliath had absolutely no damage whatsoever. It heats up crazy fast, around 7 degrees per second, and can technically withstand temperatures up to 500 degrees Celsius. I will probably never test it though. It is a very simple yet efficient design and I am extremely pleased with its performance. While the upgrades definitely weren't cheap, I don't think I'd say they weren't worth it either. Sure the stock setup would have done job just fine, but where's the fun in that? Sometimes you just gotta tinker with stuff even if it's not 100% necessary. Finding little projects to mess with is way more interesting than just letting the printer sit there untouched. Plus, after I'm done with tweaking I should have a smoother running machine. So maybe the money could have been saved, but the tinkering, especially learning, was totally worth to me. It's really bugging me that I can't test out my new ESC yet because of the bad weather. I've been so stoked to hook it up ever since I got it running on a big motor. But there's just been way too much snow and rain. At least my 3D printer gave me something to fiddle with indoors for now. Fingers crossed that the sun comes out soon so I can have some fun. If you like this video please consider subscribing so it can motivate me to do more videos about electronics, manufacturing and 3D printing.